There you are. Welcome back. This is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And recently I had some issues with it. I performed troubleshooting steps and I fixed it. And I proved that I fixed it because I have a completed print on the print bed. And this really reminded me of how important troubleshooting skills are. 3D printing is just nothing but continuous steps of troubleshooting. And then at the end, you're left with success. And so I would like to explore how I went about troubleshooting the issue I had with my A1 Mini and how you might be able to learn from that. I did ask on formerly Twitter. I said I had fixed an issue and I troubleshooted things and would people be interested? And more than 100 people liked the post on formerly Twitter and a few people actually had some Brian Vines level dad jokes with the transparentness of the machine. So it was kind of fun to see. What I'm gonna do now is take apart the A1 Mini you have to push down on these little things and then the PTFE comes out. You gotta make sure you got fingernails for it. Sweet. I'm gonna unplug it from the machine just so we can clear it off. I don't wanna get in the way. Save the poop for later. The problem I had with this A1 Mini is that it wouldn't recognize when filament had been retracted. It would retract filament and then it wouldn't sense it. So it would just keep retracting and retracting and then it would throw an error. The clear A1 Mini that I was given uh, along with some other creators is considered a prototype. There's no warranty. I should be able to troubleshoot this. And the fact that the case is transparent helped a great deal. Oh, and the prints, they stay on. These prints here are staying on the bed and we're not gonna look at them until we're done. What you're looking at right here, that's the clear case. I'm surprised the, the cutter lever isn't clear and I'm surprised this isn't clear, but you know what? Most of it is. The first step is gonna be just taking off this clear case and it just, it just pops right off, just like that. I don't believe we have to do this step, but it doesn't hurt just because I kind of want to show you. So below is the nozzle and there's this little gate that pops open and then the entire nozzle and assembly can come out. Uh, you can see where it's held on and there's magnets. There's a, there's a thermistor right there. The next step is to get the tools that came with your A1 Mini or your machine that you're troubleshooting. And in this case, it's these little hex drivers, the tiny little ones. We're actually gonna use the big one and take two screws out of the top. These are pretty easy to remove and they're tiny, so don't lose them. Next step, it does require a little bit of finesse. What's connected to the piece we're taking out is a ribbon cable that goes to the sensor for the filament detection. And it's kind of coiled up on the inside. So what we need to do is slowly take it out without ripping it or tearing it. There it is right there. And it just comes out just like that. Now that this piece is out, we can take a look at it. This is where the PTFE tubes go in. It has that spring mechanism. And then the filament comes out the end right here. You can see that ribbon cable go in here on the side and attached to this board. And this board has the sensor for the filament detection. Let me get some filament and I'll show you how it works. I've got some red PLA. So satisfying. And by red, I mean orange. Filament comes through any one of the holes. It slides through, and then it comes to this point. Let's see if I can show you. So that silver piece lifts. And as it lifts up, there's a magnet on this side of it. And that magnet interacts with the sensor. So no filament. That tells the sensor there is filament. And it works really, really well, except for when it doesn't. Let's take it apart a little bit further and I'll show you what happened on mine. Remember, we're dealing with really small screws, so just don't lose them. Now this board, it should just come right off, just like that. There's a little bit of adhesive right there that holds it to this, but otherwise we are now free and clear. So here's the problem I was having with mine. Filament would go in and it would print like crazy, and then it would go to retract the filament. Now when it retracted, that silver piece wouldn't pull back all the way which meant that the sensor could still detect the magnet. And so even though there was no filament present, it thought there was. One of the reasons why I really appreciate this transparent case is because I wouldn't have been able to troubleshoot this nearly as well without being able to see the internal components as they were being used. Bamboo, if I could offer any advice, it would be to offer a transparent case option for the A1 and the A1 Mini. Let's take a close look at this mechanism. There is a piece 
that moves as filament goes past it, and it looks like it rotates on that hinge. So if that's stuck like this, and it's rotating on that hinge, as we turn it around, it looks like the mechanism is spring-loaded. My issue was, with it being stuck in the up position, there was either some bit of friction causing it to not being able to go back down, or the spring wasn't strong enough to force it back down. Now, I'm not a spring person. I am not going to be able to wind that tiny, tiny little spring. Just as an example, there's my thumbnail, there's the spring. I am not going to be able to wind that spring enough in order to make it work. And so what's a way that I can reduce friction in a part? We can sand to reduce friction or we can add lubricant. I did a recent video where I utilized some lubricant. So this is the Prusa lubricant that I used on my Prusa XL. This is tiny, super duper tiny. So we have to find a way to get that piece out. And then we have to make sure the spring doesn't go crazy somewhere else where we can't find it. And then we have to make sure we can get it back together. Here's what I did. This piece right here, the axle, the hinge, just gonna push it just a little bit. And see it comes out right there. See that spring arm right there? We can disengage that. And then because it's transparent, we can see how far we're pulling it out. And now, I guess it just falls out. That's the tiny, tiny little piece. The tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. There's my thumbnail for scale. Next steps are fairly easy. So I want to put the grease on this side of it. Careful, there's a magnet, Joel. That side, because that's the side that rubs against the internal mechanism. So I want I just the tiniest little bit, just touch it. Just a tiny little bit. Just enough to provide a little lubrication where it needs it the most. Now, it does get a little bit difficult at this point because we have to put everything back together. One thing that the grease allows for is to help this stick to the side. So what I can do is utilize tools to push it into place. And then I can put the hinge or the axle in. So it's going to go in right there just a little bit. And now all we have to do is line it up. This is... Did I get? No, I didn't get it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, wait, I want you to be able to see it. Okay, look at that. Look at that. We are through. You can see it poking right through. So there's the spring. One arm is longer than the other. Now, when you take apart something, you have to remember how to put it back together. And I remember that longer arm is the one that goes against the plastic. See how it's got that little, that little bit sticking out right there? So I'm just holding it there. Okay, and it goes through, and then we're in. Now we have to put the spring arm back into place. Kind of goes right. Huh, it's in. You can see a little bit of that lubricant sheen on the side of the plastic. So that lubricant is enough to let that piece float perfectly. And one of the questions I had was that, am I going to pollute the filament going through? That's always a possibility. I put an additive into a place where there wasn't a design to have an additive, but the amount of grease is so minuscule that I don't think it will interfere. I mean, I do have a completed print on the print bed showcasing that it works just fine, but just in case, that's something that I want to keep in mind. If for some reason something crazy happens with the filament, it could be the additive that I put in. Now what we do is we put it back together. Remember, you are screwing into plastic. And so when it says, whoa, it's time to stop pushing that screw in, stop screwing. Remember that cable that I said was just kind of hanging out right there? Snake some of it back in. Some of it can stick out. That little bend in the cable gives it enough of a buffer to be able to slide right down in. So in and then in. That goes over. And this comes across. Uh, uh. <laughs> Luckily, the magnets hold it. So big approach. There we go. It's locked in. It's locked in. You see it? It's locked in. This again is a prototype, so it doesn't have all the creature comforts. Uh, I can I can throw that in. Caution. Hot. Hot caution. Last but not least, one of the last steps you can do is turn on the machine. 
<laughs> I just got a reminder on there, a lubrication reminder. The last step in verifying our fix worked is to verify the electronics and we got everything put back together. What I'm gonna do is put some filament in from the top. And on this screen where it says extruder, you can see there's not a dot. But if I put this in down to where the filament sensor is, the green dot turns on. And if I take it out, it turns off. So that's great. And I'm so excited now because I can finally take these off the build plate. Found these on Maker World. I sent these to the A1 Mini from my phone. And, and these are these cute little dolls. These are kind of fun. I like these. I wonder if the supports will come off. Look at that. The head moves, arm moves, that arm moves. Oh, it is a little hairy. I got a fix for that. Cleans it right up. This is the joy that I find. I love this. I absolutely love this. And I love that I get to bring it to you. Like I said, 3D printing is just nothing but a bunch of troubleshooting steps. And once you're done with the troubleshooting, you have yourself a model that's done and, and you get to look at it. That's the greatest part. This seemed complicated at first. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried about this, but the transparency of the case aided in my ability to troubleshoot. And then once I calmed down and slowly took things apart and remembered not to lose any of the fasteners, I found out how it worked. I found out why it wasn't working and then I just utilize a little elbow grease. I hope you go out and fix some things. I hope you go out and have some fun. And I hope you made it this far because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Troubleshoot all the things. And as always, high five.